All right, good morning, guys. Okay, so um, I really felt like God was putting this on my heart, and hopefully I can maintain my composure. Um, this has to do with suicide and what God has to say about it. So why don't we begin by prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your heavenly message. Thank you for the message that you have been providing with me, provided me. Thank you for sharing with me the things in my heart and the things that um, that are I know are in many people's hearts regarding this topic of suicide. Um, thank you for for just helping us understand your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, so there's a, a Bible verse when Jesus was tempted in the desert. Um, and the devil came to him and, and uh, uh, quoted from this Bible verse. And this came from, uh, and, and he was talking about, at least you strike your foot against the stone. Um, okay, so this is Psalms 91.12. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Um, and obviously the devil was, was, he quoted scripture and he knows the Bible better than we know the Bible. And it's a shame but this is how it works. So the devil is is very good at twisting scripture, um, giving you half truths. And I just want to read this uh, Psalms ninety one. And I remember that my mom would always pray, you know, you know Psalms ninety one over over us. Now, while it's not good to declare and decree scripture, um. She would always mention it a lot. And uh, why don't I just read the entire Psalms? It's not a very long psalm. So um, this is Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the, the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, whom I trust. He will deliver me uh, from the snare of the follower, uh, from the faller, and from the deadly pestilence, he will cover me. Uh, he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield, and buckle it. Uh, and buckler, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that uh, files by day, nor the pestilence that strikes in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes noonday. A thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and recompose of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The right, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil will be allowed to befall you. No plague will come near you. Your no plague will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard uh, to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent will be tr uh, will trample trample your underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When, when he calls, I will answer him. I will be with him 
in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So that's Psalms 91. While I was reading it, uh, God kind of showed me something. Um, it was talking about the right hand. So a thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. So the Bible talks about the right hand and 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 um, how Jesus is at the right hand of God. Well, Jesus is representative of right, righteousness, and things that are on a right side represents righteousness. So when they fall at our right hand and they fall at our right side, they are falling because we are striving in righteousness um, and that we are seeking the Lord Almighty. Um, and in my own personal life, I can tell you that even though that I know that there are things that I still have difficulties with, whether it be pride arrogance, insolence, um, whether it be, um, uh, you know, my desires to have, to, to, uh, seek after women that I know that are not clean and pure for me. Um, the thing about God is that he loves us so very much that he, he's not going to to cause you to slip up. He's not going to cause his servants to slip up because they have difficulty in an area. Um, and one of the reasons why he won't um, is because he's trying to build you up and not tear you down. Um, it is those who are seeking after gods that are not him. And because he's a jealous God and because he's a just God, he will hand us over to those people to or or to those people or to those demons whatever or whatever evil that they serve um, and notice what it says here um, let's see uh, fear okay And then it says, uh, uh, this is Psalms 91.5. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows that fly by day. So, notice, um, notice that it's talking about fear. Uh, and notice it's talking about the arrows. Because in a sp spiritual realm... There is a spirit of fear, and there are spiritual arrows that can can come and hurt uh, hurt us. Um, and if our armor is weak, uh, and we are fearing something, it's usually because it's punishment uh, or the fear of punishment. And it's just, it's our soul that fears it, not our minds, because we're not able to comprehend it yet. But it's our soul that that knows that we are un, we are heading for punishment. So to to better illustrate this, uh, why don't we read John, First John four eighteen? There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been in perfect love. So why don't we talk about this fear for a second in terms of punishment. Um, those who are uh, undergoing oppression, depression, and things like these will find themselves fearing a lot. And if you're fearing something, um, you'll find yourself uh, in this place of darkness and and it'll be constant darkness and the only way to really get out of this um, is to first put your 
faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. But the second thing is that we need to we need to um, say, God, use your rod upon my life. I want you to show me what it is that I need to change. Um, but more so, I want you to to um, help me um, so that I understand what it is that I need to do to follow your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and you're always supposed to be asking for forgiveness. Um, basically, the Lord's Prayer. If you can do the Lord's Prayer, um, you can... Uh, this is something that can... Um, this is something that you can... You can communicate with God about. And, and God just wants you to communicate with Him. He already knows what's on your heart, but He wants you to be open and... And um, he just wants you to be real with him um, and not to be ashamed. Um, and, he, and, and that hardening of our hearts, when people go to, to darkness and they forget about Jesus, um, and those who are on the verge of suicide, uh, I can tell you, that if they were so broken and they choose the Lord Jesus, they choose God, they will find themselves being rescued by God in that capacity. But in order to get there is you have to be truly repentant and, and get on your knees, whatever it takes. You know, some people have to get on their knees to do it. Some people have to really just you know it, it just brings them to a place of brokenness and the bible tells us that blessed is the poor in spirit he's going to come to you if you're poor in the spirit but he wants you to call upon his name so why don't we talk about uh um i'm not sure whether i should talk about robin williams or my cousin um I'll talk about Robin Williams since he's the more popular person on this particular topic. Um, Robin Williams, uh, there was a video where uh, I saw a prophet say that Robin Williams was uh, in hell. And I was actually praying about this, you know, I, I just, I needed some wisdom from God. Because one of the things that uh, Robin Williams thought while he's in hell is that he was, he thought it was a joke like like but I'm a good person well think about you know his idea of a good person is one thing but what brings on um, oppression and depression what brings on suicidal thoughts well if we look at um, if we look at what witchcraft does to people is it it actually brings on oppression and depression so in in it wouldn't surprise me if he was involved in some level of witchcraft uh and this witchcraft um isn't doesn't always look like witchcraft we th we think that it looks like something else for some people it's drugs for others, it's alcohol. For others, it may may they may have dabbled in their arts. You know, who knows? Uh, sexual immorality brings witchcraft, um, and this is why we have an immense amount of people in our world today who are who are dabbling in witchcraft, but they don't even know it because they don't read the word. And they don't love his word. They don't honor his word. Um, and I remember my cousin. And he was such a good, loving person. And, and one of the things about him was that he had a rebellious nature. A very rebellious nature. And at one point, I believe he did, died of a heroin overdose. And... Now, he accepted Jesus at an early age, 
But I would pray about it and I would ask God, hey, where did he go? You know, he basically died of a heroin overdose. That's the, you know, it's basically like you're committing suicide in a way. Um, but what God showed me is that he loved the devil so much that that's all his focus was, was acting like the devil. And it's, it hurts me to think about that because he was such a good, good man. He had, he was, he, he had wonderful children. He, yeah, but he left two of them behind. Um, but here's what I have to say about that. Is God a just God? Absolutely. 100%. But in order to, to um, understand this justice, we need to understand what it is that we're, our hearts, where our hearts are. Um, and I can't tell you how many times that when I hear about suicide and I hear about people saying that, well, I don't believe that God is going to send that person to hell just for suicide. He may not, but that's not the reason why they would go to hell. The reason why they would go to hell is because, first of all, they let themselves be taken over by the enemy. So, are you really going to mock God and think that just somehow these people don't go to hell because they committed suicide? Now, the Bible tells us that we should not commit murder. And to commit murder on ourselves is to commit murder against God's images. We are made in God's images. But that's not the purpose of this problem here. The purpose is that this person is so tormented that he feels, he believes that the only way to get out of this torment is by um, ending his life. Now, but this is not where the problem began. The problem began because he didn't, this person didn't fear the Lord and he did not repent. He did not repent from his ways. Um, so what, how is it any different from us? You know, are you, are you living a life of repentance? Are you praying the Lord's prayer morning and night? Are you saying, Father God, I'm sorry. These are the things that I, I did today. I need to give it to you. I'm giving it to you on the altar and I need you to help me get over these things. Um, and it grieves him greatly when we don't come to him and ask him for forgiveness because he knows where that's going to lead us if we don't um, do as, his, as he commands us to do. And every day we have to start new. We have to, we have to say, Father God, I'm sorry. I know that I'm wrong. You know, repent from something when it happens during the day. Don't just let it go. You know, and, and God will... And, and when you ask God to have him show you what it is that he wants you to do, he will. He's faithful to do those things. Um, let me turn this down for a second. Okay. So he's going to do the... He, he's not going to cause you grief and, and let you stumble. But it's your responsibility to keep step with the Holy Spirit. And if you're not, and and here's the thing about God, is that a lot of these people who say I don't believe, think about what they just said. I don't believe. They put themselves in the question, the equation, and they are making up God's word. So therefore, they're already committing sin. And this sin is basically is saying that God is a liar. I don't believe God. Therefore, I have no faith in Jesus. So. Uh, wait a second. Um, so, if if you are so against God about what He already said, 
And you're making up his... You're making up Bible verses to fit your lifestyle, to fit your belief system. Rather than going to the source who inspired the prophets of old to write these words, um, these holy words, uh, so that we may live. You know, are we going to God for these things? Um, are we asking God's opinion about all of these things? So, the biggest problem here is that we don't seek the Lord for guidance um, in all things. And that's what God wants us to do, is He just wants us to just settle down. Ask Him. Ask Him His opinion. You don't need to go to a bishop. You don't need to go to to um, some man for his advice on what he thinks the Bible says. God gave us the Holy Spirit for a reason, so that we wouldn't be led into error. And part of being led into error is not going to God first when we have a question in our mind. Um, one way or the other, God will give you the answers to your heart, but you have to be open to him. So, anyways, I'll, I'll let it, uh, I'll let this close on this, but, um, I thank everyone for, for, um, listening, and, um, I, this is a hard topic, for, I know, for a lot of people, um, but the reality is, is that God loves you more than you think you know, and he, it grieves him greatly when you are not abiding in him, um, so rather than thinking about God as a cruel God, ask him, think about this. God loves you so much that he will give you all of your heart's desires. So if your heart is nothing but wickedness, hardness before God, saying that I don't want to communicate to you, and you keep blaming him and saying that he's evil because he sends people to hell, no, he sends people to where their heart is. So if your heart is wicked, he'll send you to that place. If your heart is, is godly, he will send you to the place of godliness. So make no mistake, God is not mocked. Stop mocking God. Just stop. There's no, just, there's no reason for it. So anyways, I know this is a harsh message, but, um, Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful day.